thank you very much. Um, it, it's really great to be here. Um, I understand Prime Minister O'Neill was here this morning, but he's not here now. And um, so, but if he is, uh, I'd like to acknowledge Prime Minister O'Neill uh, for being here today. Uh, I'd also like to thank Business Advantage for making this conference happen. One of the highlights of my job as Assistant Minister for Trade, Tourism and Investment has been getting to know Papua New Guinea uh, better. I visited twice this year for the APEC Ministers responsible for trade meeting and the APEC tourism meeting. Uh, uh, I was also in Brisbane uh, prior to that for a, uh, a, another investment uh, seminar uh, with uh, PNG uh, not long after I got this job in March. Uh, so PNG has been my go-to destination to meet my counterparts and take forward Australia's interests in APEC and in relations with PNG. I also got to be on the judging panel in Port Moresby for a collaboration between Google and APEC to produce an app that would demonstrate the power of digital commerce. The winners were a father and daughter team, Jonathan and Crystal Q, whose app will link billum makers to buyers. So PNG has shown me how traditional grassroots, or in this case, grass stems, industries can benefit from modern technology through brilliant programming. Visiting PNG has also been an eye-opener in other ways as well. For a start, it's a very different country to the place where I grew up and it's different to the piece of Australia that I represent in the Australian Parliament. My electorate of parks is big. Um, if you picked it up and moved it north, it would cover 85% of PNG, but it has no mountains. Well, it has Mount Capita, but uh, probably doesn't count. Uh, uh, no coastline, plenty of open plains, wonderful people and very little rain. Lately, no rain at all. Um, we're in the worst drought. Um, in um, at least 50 years, possibly uh, in 100 years out there at the moment. It's a very difficult time for our farmers, a time when community spirit, that, that commitment to each other and to the place you share becomes all the more important. People's commitments to each other's well-being, that's the kind of investment that I'm really interested in. It's our commitment to shared goals that gives rise to confidence, finds opportunities and even, even in hardship and steers a wise course in good times as well. Uh, for Australia, PNG is a valuable partner and the confidence that our relations generate is a real national asset. There are deep historical ties between us, forged through many generations of commerce, church and community contacts, development work and war. We share the same democratic heritage and we have shared interests in the world as fellow democracies. PNG sits at the crossroads of our two neighbourhoods, the Pacific and, the South and Southeast Asia, and has growing global connections, as my APEC visits brought home to me very clearly when I was up there a couple of months ago. As befits a close neighbour, Australia takes a long-term approach to this partnership. That's evident in the close security relations between our militaries, police forces and coast guards. We are PNG's security part, primary security partner, and this is borne out in our support for APEC, particularly during the Leaders' Week, which will be coming up later in the year. Australia is providing security support, including high-end incident response capabilities for the, from the Australian Defence Force and capacity building for Papua New Guinea's Police Defence Force and its border intelligence, transport and cyber security agencies. So our security relations are strong, and heading in the right direction. My theme today is Australia's long-term approach to economic partnership with PNG and the confidence we generate by working together. Direct investment is at the heart of this. Australian governments and businesses know from deep experience that foreign investment is a great way to build confidence, skills, capital and wealth. Firms from the United King first, Kingdom, first of all, and then other European nations in the United States, Japan, and more recently China, have to helped develop Australia from day one. And that trend continues. I think sometimes that gets lost, that Australia still relies very much on uh, investment uh, from overseas. So along with much-needed capital, they bought cutting-edge technology, skills for our workforce and revenue for our government. As my colleague, Steve Chobo has said, foreign investment spurs economic growth, creates jobs and raises our standards of living. This is the background to bear in mind when we in Australian government encourage the government of Papua New Guinea to maintain a regulatory environment that welcomes foreign investment. 
The other thing to bear in mind is that most countries around the world understand the benefits of foreign investment and are competing to attract it. This is certainly front of mind for the Australian government and it shapes our policies on tax and competitiveness generally. For all these reasons, investment is central to the Australian government's vision for relations between Australia and PNG. We encourage Australian investment in PNG for sure. Australia has $16 billion invested in PNG uh, and that's the real vote of confidence in the country and its future. But just as important is the common interest our two nations have in attracting and regulating investment from other countries. In the time remaining, I will suggest three principles for our work together, governments and businesses alike, to boost our investment relationship, to compete successfully for foreign investment, and for each of us to achieve our economic goals. Firstly, the partnership principle. At the heart of all success, you'll find people working together towards a common goal. This is true at leaders level, where relations between Australia and PNG are very strong. Prime Minister Turnbull was delighted to welcome Prime Minister O'Neill and several of his ministerial colleagues to Australia last month. This is also true at the ministerial level, and I know uh, Prime Minister Turnbull, Foreign Minister Bishop and Trade and Tourism and Investment Minister Chobo are looking forward to visiting Port Moresby for APEC in November. These close contacts at, high, at the highest levels keeps our relationship heading in the right direction. There's also a strong network of personal relations in the public service to implement our country's shared agenda. I just mentioned two new bilateral forums, the Secretary level economic cooperation dialogue and the trade and investment working group. Both promote economic cooperation and remove impediments to bilateral trade and investment. To maintain good environment for business, partnerships between ministries and between business and regulators are crucial. The more we can get business and government in the same room as we are today, sharing perspectives and learning together, the better are our economies. Often it is the business that understands best many of the issues that regulators must manage, so it makes sense that they come together regularly. Also critical are the relations between businesses and communities. The social licence to operate is now well understood in the resource industry. The Australian Government, through our aid program, is investing in business, businesses that benefit communities and help us to achieve our aid objectives. So relationships are at the heart of all our economic efforts. The second principle is the power of agreed, predictable rules. Contracts, of course, are the backbone of investment relationships. Predictable, stable, consultative leg leg regulation is also crucial so that all stakeholders can have their say, their interests reflected and adapt to change in a timely way. Much of the international work that Australia and PNG do together is about agreeing on rules and standards. APEC focuses on ensuring that there are good rules for international trade that will translate to improvements in living standards. I understand that there's been a major focus of a that this has been a major focus of a public discussion at the Pacific Leadership and Governance Precinct in Port Moresby in recent weeks. Minister Pato said the message Papua New Guinea wants to send it as APEC uh, as the APEC host is that the world will be the better for a steady, free, fair and inclusive rules-based trading system. And that was certainly uh, brought home uh, in his speech to uh, the APEC forum when I was there earlier in the year. Executive Director for the APEC Secretariat based in Singapore, Dr Alan Bollard, said that over the time that Papua New Guinea has been in APEC, uh, which is since 1993, income per capita has doubled. So Papua New Guineans today, on average, roughly are twice as well off as their parents. APEC is about setting the rules that help member countries to lead the world in trade-driven growth. Australia puts on high priority, puts a high priority on setting liberalisation, uh, liberalise, liberalising trade agreements through trade deals. The Australian government is delighted that the government of Papua New Guinea has expressed an interest in looking at this again. We firmly believe it is in the interest of PNG to have another look at the PACER Plus program, that's the Pacific Agreement for Closer Economic Relations. If, you, if, it, if PNG signs on, it will benefit their economy and our entire Pacific region by freeing up trade and investment. The third principle is operating for the long term. Australia and PNG both have enormous resources potential. It's tempting to see that wealth is something 
that can be, it can be helped to meet the current economic objectives. However, in Australia's experience, resource projects are typically complicated, capital intensive and multi-year operations. A long-term approach is also important for the diversification of the economy. Innovation thrives on a, well -based, uh, on a base of well-maintained infrastructure. This is true of tourism, agribusiness and service industries. That's why Australia helps to maintain 2,000 kilometres of PNG's most important roads each year. It's also why Australia will majority fund the undersea telecommunications cables to PNG and Solomon Islands. The Coral Sea cable system will deliver faster, cheaper and more reliable communications infrastructure according to both countries' significant economic benefits, affording both countries' significant e economic benefits. With sound long-term planning and regulation, Australia, uh, <coughs> Australian and PNG businesses can innovate together to build fa a fast-growing sustainable digital economy. Australian businesses are keen to enha enhance their relationships in PNG through the supply of innovative technology that support and sustain PNG's development. The example of this is a Sydney-based company called Anstel, which brings the benefits of digital information management to PNG through Digicel's extensive mobile network. And I've got to say, I've never seen more shops selling uh, mobile phones anywhere in the world than I have in Port Moresby. Uh, the Digicel's presence is quite, uh, quite phenomenal. These key areas of focus for this technology in PNG are agriculture, where Ancel's Auto Nordic's platform will allow farmers to monitor temperature changes, humidity levels and soil conditions to improve their product yields. Smart buildings, where the optimisation of electricity and heating, ventilation and air conditioning will reduce electricity bills and power usage. And food safety, where the monitoring of temperatures across the entire supply chain will result in better food quality. Another great example of digital cooperation that will be enormously helpful for a country that relies so heavily on is its air transport services. Skynet is a leading Australian provider of satellite communications and is supplying software solutions to aviation customers in PNG, fixed wing and helicopter, to manage flight tracking, data telemetry, scheduling, in-flight messaging, duress alarms and analytics. This is crucial. And of course, the two Australian banks that have been operating in PNG for many years, ANZ and Westbank, uh, and I acknowledge the uh, regional manager sitting here in front of me, uh, 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 have been very active in delivering innovative mobile and online banking solutions for their customers in PNG. After selling its retail banking operation to Kena Bank, ANZ uh, maintains its corporate banking business in PNG. Many of Westpac's customers and those of Kena Bank are in rural and remote parts of the country where access to banking services is quite problematic for much of the population. This extension of banking and financial services also helped to provide greater financial empowerment for more women in PNG. Ladies and gentlemen, Australia and PNG have an exciting future to look forward to. APEC is a sign of PNG's maturity on the global stage. Australia is already is ready to invest in PNG and to partner with PNG for the long term. And, and the Australian government is committed to further strengthening and diversifying our long-standing relationship with PNG, a relationship that continues to benefit both our countries. Thank you very much.